The Mac Pro has always been my battle station of choice for design, photography, and video production. For people like me who enjoy constantly upgrading and add, adding internal storage, expansion cards, RAM, processors, staying with the latest GPU, there really is no other option on the Mac. And before we move on, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel too, so you get notified when I share more content. Arguably the oldest Mac that can keep up with the current Mac models of today is the Mac Pro 4,1 and 5,1. I mean, just seeing it sitting here next to the newest 7,1 Mac Pro, you can see its influence on industrial design, a form factor that is tested and true. This cheese grater case was first revealed all the way back in June of 2003 with the Power Mac G5 using PowerPC-based processors, and then in August of 2006 with Intel-based processors, and was later discontinued in October of 2013. So literally for over a decade, Apple had this cheese grater form factor present in their lineup, an icon of the most pro Mac you could purchase. I actually owned a Power Mac G5 way back in the day, used it early on in my design career. It was the first Mac computer to use a 64-bit processor. Some of the things Apple was doing way back then was amazing for its time. For example, they created the ADC connector, which connected flat panel displays and carried video and power via one cable. There was also FireWire 800, which had faster sustained write speeds than USB 3. Anyway, the original cheese grater design was a sight to behold way back in 2003. I remember heads would turn as people walked by my office seeing a monolith of precision anodized aluminum just sitting there. It was definitely a conversation piece. Well, actually a statement piece. It's honestly really cool to think that the very same form factor that turned heads in 2003 still does today. It's a testament to Apple's DNA, their attention to detail and focus on really amazing industrial design. And to think that today you can turn an old piece of tech, something many have forgotten about, into a very capable, flexible and expandable workstation in 2021 is quite amazing really. I have spent many hours with this machine knocking out design projects for my clients, creating content for this very channel. And the best part is you can sometimes find these machines for a steal, giving you a base machine to start, creating a truly unique to you Mac. Honestly, I won't lie, I found several Mac Pros and some old Apple Cinema displays on Facebook Marketplace, purchased them from this guy for about $100. I mean, like, I'm talking three Mac Pros and like three displays. They were forgotten about, they were dusty, they were old, they were sitting in his garage. You know, the new M1 Macs, they promise speed, efficiency, but in some ways to me, they just aren't as fun. I find a lot of joy in rebuilding and making a forgotten relic from 2009 into a capable workhorse. For example, this machine you're looking at right now, this beast, originally manufactured in 2009. I upgraded it to dual 3.46 gigahertz Xeon 5690 processors with six cores each, 48 gigs of ECC RAM in triple channel configuration, a Radeon Vega Frontier with 16 gigs of VRAM, a one terabyte M.2 NVMe via PCI controller card, an extra one terabyte for Windows 10. I also modded the power supply using this thing called the Pixloss mod to feed power to hungry GPUs. So today I'm excited because I had the opportunity to do this very upgrade once again for a friend of mine. She provided this blank canvas for me to work on. Let's get started. You're gonna need a USB 3 card, one terabyte NVMe, two 3.46 gigahertz processors, a Radeon 580X, 48 gigs of RAM, and a shot of espresso. Well, just to get through the upgrade, you might need that. You're going to remove the old dusty GPU that's been sitting in there for years. It's nasty. Ew. You're going to vacuum out all the old dust and junk that's been sitting there from the previous owner. It's pretty gross too, but you got to do that. Clean it out. Good. Plug in the GPU cable into the back plate. Slide in the 580X or whatever your GPU of choice is and plug it in and then you're going to install the USB 3 card 
into one of the PCI slots. And you're gonna lock the fan back into place. Now that I've got the RX580 inside of this machine, we can move this machine to Mojave. It's currently on High Sierra, but in order to do the upgrade to Mojave, you need a metal capable card. And once we do that, then we can also install a one terabyte NVMe. Uh, which uh, Mojave unlocks that capability in these old Mac Pros. Next you need a 3 mil extra long hex wrench. I'll give a link in the description. You're going to go in a crisscross pattern to loosen the heat sinks on your new dual processor tray. You're just going to kind of go back and forth, back and forth. Go easy on it, just gently try to see if it's loose. It may take a few times before it's completely free and you can release a CPU heatsink. Same goes for the other side, just go crisscross, remove the screws until you're able to freely remove the heatsink. Then you're gonna remove the old processors. They're gonna be stuck with old CPU paste. Now you just want to clean and inspect the old sockets. Make sure it's all clean and ready to go. I use just regular rubbing alcohol to clean off the heat sinks. Get all the old paste off of that and clean it up till it's nice and shiny. Next you want to remove the old thermal pads that are for the NVRAM chips and clean that up and then you're going to apply new thermal pads. One millimeter pads are fine. Just apply that to the NVRAM chips and then add your new processors. Make sure you align the little notch to each socket. Add your thermal paste, not too much, just a little bit and then realign the CPU heat sinks and tighten them down ever so gently. As you see, I'm not really using the, the top blue handle because I just want to get a feel for it with my fingers. You don't want them too tight, but you don't want them too loose. What happens is if they're not on at the right tension, a red light will appear um, and you'll see it with the Mac Pro door open and that means it's not registering some of the RAM because the processor isn't nicely sealed down. So you want to make sure that's tight enough but not really tight because you'll bend the pins on the socket. Next you're going to add all your RAM. And you're going to do that in triple channel configuration. Now you're going to release the old CPU tray. Same thing here, you're going to clean out all that dust that's been building up over the years nice and clean. Slide in the new dual processor tray that you just upgraded. Go easy on this and make sure once it's in, just eyeball it and make sure everything looks nice and even and you got it in correctly. And then you can boot up the new Mac, make sure the processors are working. And in this case it is and we are in business. So you can see we're booted into Mojave. And you can see that we've got two 3.46 gigahertz six core Intel Xeons. Now you can add your one terabyte NVMe and any other extra hard drives that you want. And then once you do that, you can install Catalina onto that new one terabyte NVMe. And now here you go, check it out. This Mac Pro has been upgraded completely all the way to Catalina. Thanks to OpenCore, I'll put links in the description about OpenCore, which enables hardware acceleration. As you can see here, I've got full 4K hardware acceleration. I am continuously encouraged by an amazing community of Facebook groups that share tips, tricks to keep your old Mac Pro like this one, crushing it in the areas of content creation. And this is where I spent most of my time before I began doing the upgrades. I learned the best tips and tricks, and I'll add links in the description below to some of these groups so you can join. 
I highly recommend you check them out as you begin your journey in the world of vintage Mac upgrades. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you out in making a decision to find one of these old Mac Pros locally and deciding to upgrade it like I did. It's really not that hard. It just takes a little bit of time to find the, the correct parts on eBay. And so I'll include links in the description on how to find these parts that you need to upgrade a 4 comma 1 or 5 comma 1. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And I hope to see you guys on the next video.